coming out today. Um, two ingredients we really want to showcase today is the limoncello from Deep Roots Distillery. So it's an Italian style liqueur. It's meant to be a bit of a digestive after the meal. It's very sweet, very lemony. Uh, so it's going to balance the dish really well. And we also have some beautiful Sweet Island Kisses from uh, Atlantic Aqua that we're going to use today for the demo. They're beautiful, medium choice oysters. They're nice and full, meaty, lots of growing in them. So they're going to work perfectly for the baked oyster dish that we have today. So we're going to do a baked oyster with remoulade and parmesan. So remoulade is essentially a mixture of three ingredients. It's parsley, lemon, and garlic. And it's an Italian dish, Italian seasoning that you can use on many different things. Shellfish, seafood, poultry, what have you. Um, it's, I chose it for this recipe because it's very simple. It's really bright, vibrant flavor. So it's just gonna complement an already beautiful oyster. So you don't wanna overcomplicate it with oysters. They're, they're just so gorgeous on their own. You just wanna enhance the flavor. So Tyler's going to be shucking uh, oysters throughout the demo, so we can hand out some samples to everybody at the end. Um, he's hand shucking, so I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, what to look for when you're selecting oysters. This is a medium choice. You're going to want one that has a nice um, cup on the bottom and a flat top. It takes about two and a half years to get to this size, approximately, so you really want to make sure that you, you treat it with respect because it's two and a half years old. Um, so I go in from the hinge, so I'm going to use a towel to shut just because I find it has a little bit of extra support and um, security around it. So I'm going in from the hinge, I'm using a long dexter oyster shucker. I have a couple displayed here, it really depends on your personal preference on what kind of oyster shucker you use. Tyler's using the banjo, that's a shucker patty, uh, more ergonomic, and some Victorian Ops ones. It's all about the handle, it's all about the feel. Anyway, I encourage you to just try. So I'm gonna go in from the hinge, and all you're gonna wanna do is twist. Uh, the misconception is that you really have to use a lot of force to get in there. You don't wanna do that because you don't want any of the debris getting into the oyster. It's just a matter of a quick pop. Now the oyster is open. There's two abductor muscles on the oyster, one on the top shell and one on the bottom shell. So you're gonna wanna go in on the top, and sever both of those muscles so that the meat is separate from the shell. This is how you, what you're gonna have to do for the recipe as well. So we're gonna do a recipe that is 12 oysters um, and don't worry too much about the uh, details. They're gonna be posted online after the demo so you can go check out the recipe online. Um, so we have the oyster here. So I've got the top shell severed. I'm just gonna kind of clean up the meats. You're always gonna wanna Make sure your knife is really clean next time you go in. Again, you don't want any of the shell or, or debris around it. So we're gonna go in through the bottom, and that's it. The oyster is nice and loose and fresh and delicious. It's got a beautiful amount of brine in there. You can always do a quality control check, you know, taste them before you, <laughs> before you go into it all. Um, the east coast of Canada, we have uh, high salinity levels in our, in our ocean, so our oysters are really um, they're higher on the salt than other, other oysters, so this recipe is going to complement that a lot. In the gremolata today, we're going to do flat leaf parsley, which is very Italian. There's two different types of parsley, flat leaf and curly. <laughs> Italian recipes always consist of flat leaf parsley. You see curly parsley used in other cuisines like uh, Lebanese style foods like tabbouleh and stuff like that that add volume, but when you're using a flat leaf, um, you're usually associated with Italian dishes, but uh, the flavor is a little bit different as well. So we're going to use flat leaf today. We're going to use fresh lemon, garlic, and Parmigiano Reggiano. All right, so I'm going to walk you through just how to do it. Pick something really simple that doesn't require a whole lot of equipment as well, which I think is really nice. Um, the only thing we're going to need today is our microplane, which is a zester or a rasp. If you don't have one of these in your kitchen, I highly suggest maybe picking one up. It's so versatile. We use these in commercial kitchens all the time. They're really easy to clean, and um, it just comes in handy, and it doesn't take a whole lot of space instead of like a big box grater. 
So we'll do one of those. We're going to use that for the lemon, the garlic, and the parm. And all right, so flat leaf parsley. We're going to pick it off the stem, just kind of a nice plushes like this. And I like a really rustic style remoulade, so I'm going to do like a light chop on the, everything's pre-washed. We're going to do, we're going to do a light chop on the parsley, just so you still know what herb it is. You don't want to chop it too fine where you're kind of curious and wondering, what is it? We're going to do a nice light herb, uh, chop on the herb, and that goes in. We're going to use one bunch. I have a little bit pre-done so you don't have to stare at me chopping parsley. <laughs> So I've got the chopped parsley in here. Just need a bowl and a little spoon. Again, not a whole lot of equipment. It's a really good recipe to do uh, in the middle of a kitchen party too. If somebody, a couple of people hanging around with a drink, you got these nice flavors and smells and aromas coming through the air. So it really kind of uh, gets them hungry and excited to try the dish. We're going to use one tablespoon of the limoncello. And this again adds a nice sweetness to the to the gremolata. Um, it's obviously not very traditional, but it uh, complements it quite well. And you can have a glass uh, after your meal as a nice digestive. I'm gonna do one of those. <laughs> you can pick that up at any of your uh, any of the liquor commissions around PTI as well. Uh, so lemon, pre-washed lemon, just an average lemon that you have kicking around. Um, they think they go for over a buck now at the grocery store. So if you're not zesting your lemons, you're throwing your money in the garbage. Um, I recommend zesting uh, the outside with the microplane, and it just gives that extra amount of flavor. If you use lemon for anything, you may as well juice for anything. You may as well use the zest. The microplane's really good at just taking the yellow part and leaving the white, which is really bitter and we don't want. And again, the natural sort of uh, essential oils from the lemon are kind of permeating the air. It's smelling really good. It's a nice sort of one that you can talk and do at the same time. We're going to use a full lemon's worth of zest and juice in this recipe. Especially when you're baking oysters, you kind of want a little bit of fat in there just to 
help it sizzle, help it cook, add some richness. So this recipe calls for three tablespoons.
and you can see, you can kind of just set it on there. Thank you. Like so. And it keeps all that beautiful liquid inside the oyster. It's a half hour demo, but you should fill the oysters already. <laughs> Fresh ingredients 